Rakata Yahweh Shah, Rakata Yahweh, Rakata Yahweh, Rakata Yahweh Shah. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Lachai Kudash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Green Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. All right, um, just want to do a quick video. Uh, I was uh, a thought came to me, you know, which, you know, I was just uh, meditating on. Uh, I don't even remember how what I was thinking about exactly. All right, but I know the thought came to me concerning. You know how um uh oh right i was listening to uh, one of the brothers videos um i believe it was uh the elder brother itazawam from uh i think it's the atlanta camp or so and um he was going into spiritual power and the title was that spiritual power will be a game changer all right or spiritual powers will be a game game changing or a game changer and you know he mentioned how the lord is gonna you know, it's going to bring, it's going to magnify his name, you know, and in essence, and he compared it like in, like, um, back in ancient Egypt. All right. And so thinking about that, when you really look at the, what's happening now, all right. And, um, what, how things transpired back then, there's a reason the Lord called this place, um, uh, Egypt. Okay. And, there, there's a scripture in the book of Exodus, which I'm going to get where the Lord wanted to destroy Israel and start with Moses. All right. And um, at the time, Moses was able to convince the Lord, talk him out of it. But if you look at it spiritually, the Lord still carried on with his plan and he's going to fulfill it now. OK. And um, we're going to go into the scripture and we're going to uh, 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 see exactly what I mean. Okay, and, um, you know, I took some notes down in, in terms of the comparison, you know, when you look at where we're at now, we're at the end, but we're also at the beginning. And there's a lot of parallels. See, when you go to the book of Malachi 3 and 6, it tells you that the Lord changes not. Okay, and so there's a there's a lot of parallels between the, the, the time period now and the time period in ancient Egypt. All right, because we started off, of course, we went into Egypt and we became a nation, a great nation. Well, we became uh, large, all right, and, and uh, multiplied. But then what happened after that? We we really started, our story really started with us in, in captivity and in bondage. You know, when you think about it, it was, it was a close to a similar length, you know, of, of a time that we've been in bondage here. Now, being that that, that was ancient Egypt, uh, uh, um, you know, physically, and this is spiritual Egypt. We're now in bondage in Egypt, just like we were back then. Okay, and during the time of us being in Egypt, what happened? The Lord uh, uh, rose up, you know, raised up a prophet. Okay, ro uh, uh, raised up Moses and Aaron to to do what? To prophesy. Okay, to speak against Pharaoh and to warn uh, uh, him as well as you know israel about the plagues that were coming to hit that place all right and in essence we're doing that now okay in the stead of moses and aaron we're doing that now prophesying okay against the modern day pharaoh esau edom and to these other nations and really to israel warning them of what of jacob's trouble because what is jacob's trouble going to consist of well let's get a quick precept this is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. And you know, this is not talking about ancient Egypt because at the time Ezra was being told this, this was during the, the, the time of the Babylonian. So that was long past Egypt's uh, uh, rulership over us. Okay. And verse 11 says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm 
and smite Egypt with plagues as before. Okay. And will destroy all the land thereof. So this is talking about now the spiritual Egypt, which you can read about in Revelation, uh, the 11th chapter and the 8th verse, which says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. And the dead body is referring on to us being in a, in a dead state, not being literally dead, but spiritually dead, not having the knowledge, wisdom and or understanding of who we are and uh, or of the scriptures. It says, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. So that great city is America. And it tells you that in the book of Revelation, the 17th chapter, and I believe it's the last verse. All right. It says uh, it's called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. All right, and here's where our Lord, Yahweh is crossed out. And in, 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 in uh, instead of that, they put uh, Jesus Christ on there. All right, so going back to 2nd Ezra 15, as we just read, the Lord said he's gonna smite this Egypt with plagues as before. And when is that gonna happen? Starting really fully in Jacob's trouble, leading on to what? As he says here, and will destroy all the land thereof, which is the nuclear destruction. Okay, and so just like back then, all right, at the at the word of Moses and Aaron, the plagues were hitting Egypt. Well, guess what? We're 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 in that stead prophesying about these plagues that are about to hit this modern day Egypt. Okay, and then and then what happened? You know, during the Passover, okay, when the the, the angel of death came, which was Yahweh Shai, okay, and, and is he not going to come again in this time? Because uh, we got delivered or we, we had to flee out of Egypt after after he had killed all those uh, all the firstborns all right just as now we're gonna flee out of Babylon when the Lord comes back and he destroys this place all right and and, and the scriptures talk about the Lord the slain of the Lord shall be many because guess what he slew he slew many back then as well okay and and he was the one in that chariot that was leading us uh, a, a pillar of, of, of uh, fire, by, uh, uh, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And the Lord told him that he is he is mine angel, you know, and my name is in him. Okay. And the same way, what? Yahweh is going to come and deliver us out of this Egypt. And as the scriptures say, well, let's get it. Where are we going to go after we get delivered out of this Egypt? Okay. Uh, let's go because when we got delivered out of ancient Egypt, we were taken into the wilderness All right, and the Lord did that so he could purge out the rebels and well, what's gonna happen in this time? I believe it's in uh, let's see Is it, uh, It's a lot here. Let me Try to find this precept All right, and and these are all parallels, okay? Showing you the Lord doesn't change, man. He's re the Lord is really repeating the story. He's starting over again, but this time doing it different than he did back then, okay? And guess what? Just like the Lord told Moses he was gonna start with him, he is, all right? Because for those who can receive it, who is Moses? Moses is David, King David. And who, who is the Lord raising up or delivering in this time is the house of David, because the house of David is another name for the elect. Okay. Um, trying to find it here. I believe it's in the book of Ezekiel. But uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Uh, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, um, verse 33. It says, As I live, saith the Lord power, surely will, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand. And with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there would I will I plead with you face to face. 
okay and is that not what the lord did uh, uh back in ancient egypt when we got uh taken out of there and when you go into the word plead it's shapat which means to judge to govern to act as a lawgiver or judge or governor to execute judgment okay it says here verse 36 like as i pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of egypt so will i plead with you say if the lord power so you see it, it, the, the scripture is literally saying i'm repeating what i did then <laughs> all right it says verse 37 and i will cause you to pass under the rod and i will bring you into the bond of the covenant and um i forgot exactly what the uh um uh, how it went but when you go into the customs of a shepherd and the sheep when when um when he would bring the sheep back you know into the the wherever they were kept the cottage or you know however it was the, the, at the entrance the uh the shepherd would have his uh rod at the entrance and the sheep would I, I believe if i remember correctly they would go under it all right and um i believe the he would mark it you know maybe put like some 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 sort of a uh, 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 substance on the the rod to where when they pass under it it would mark them or you know something along those lines but it was a way to keep track okay and make sure that every sheep was accounted for that was going into you know the barn or you know wherever they would they would keep them okay um so as it says here where am i at? uh yeah, verse 37, and I will cause you to pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And guess what? Back then, when we got out of the, when we got uh, uh, out of Egypt, okay, the Lord what well, made that, that, uh, 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 that covenant with us, okay, to where he gave us the laws, you know, and we, we were, we were to keep them. And what is he going to do this time? He's going to make a new covenant with us. Okay. And that's going to be. Uh, after our deliverance out of this Egypt, because it's when we get up into those chariots, Lord willing, with those new bodies, those laws are going to be written in us, in our hearts. Okay. Instead of like back then, Moses having to go to the mount, you know, to go and get the 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 the, uh, the commandments. Guess what? We're going to go up into a chariot, but we're going to get it received within us. Okay. It says here. Um, verse 37 uh verse 38 and i will purge out from uh from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me and did the lord not do that back then in ancient egypt or during the times of of, of ancient egypt it says and i will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they shall not enter into the land of israel whoa did that did that not happen did that old generation not die off it says, uh, and, and, and the scripture that links with this is um, uh, uh, Luke's, uh, Luke 19 and 27. Let me check that. Okay, where the Lord said, I believe it is. Yep, Luke 19 and 27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, right? Bring hither and slay them before me. So there you go. All right, so Ezekiel 20 and, and uh, 38, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. And and um, I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they shall not enter into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, so there you go. So you're seeing the parallels between the two and the Lord is literally repeating the story again, starting us in Egypt. Okay. Where we were no, really we were no, we didn't know who we were, okay? And then now we're in Egypt, we're prophesying in Egypt the, about the plagues that are to hit this Egypt, just like happened back then. And the Lord is going to come and kill a lot of, you know, bring a lot of judgment and deliver us just like back then, okay? And now I'm going to get uh, this precept here in Exodus the 32nd chapter because this was when um moses had gone up to get the the laws and 
Israel were basically, you know, on, on uh, saying that, well, we don't know what happened to Moses. You know, he's probably dead for all we know. So they had Aaron build that, that uh, uh, calf of gold. And the Lord, as he's with Moses up there, he got upset. And he let him know, look, you're, they they doing that shit again. You know, so let's read it. Exodus 32 and 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, go, get thee down from thy um, slakia. Go, get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Pay attention to that part. The Lord wanted to destroy the rest of Israel and make, make a great nation starting with Moses. Okay? Who, who, like I said, if you can receive it, is King David. So, well, let's read verse 11. And Moses besought the Lord his power and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with, with great power and with a mighty hand? And then he basically pleased with the Lord about it. Now, the Lord said it and he meant it. Because who's going who's gonna to get delivered this time? All right, the house of who? David. Okay, so now let's go to that. Um, let's go to the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11. It says, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Okay, so the house of David, well, that's, that's the elect, and that's who the kingdom is going to start with and then become a great nation. All right? It says that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. Okay, so, hey, the Lord wasn't playing when he said that. Okay, but, you know, these are all the, uh, the, the, the parallels, okay, between the two. And at the end of it, where did we end up? We end up in, uh, uh, in the land of Israel, okay just as the Lord is going to take us back there again uh, in this time, pursuant to Baruch. All right, as a matter of fact, let me get it real quick. Uh, I believe it's uh, Baruch, the fourth chapter. Okay, Baruch chapter four, verse uh, 36. It says, O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold, the joy that cometh from thee or unto thee from God. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away, they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. And it's spiritual because we were we were in that in the land of Canaan, all right, which was our land, but we had to leave that land to go where? Egypt. And then we stayed in Egypt, and then we became slaves there, and then the Lord took us out, and then took us right back to to uh to uh to Israel. And we were in Israel in this time, but as a, you know, because of, you know, what happened during 70 AD and so on and so forth, what happened? We had to leave that land, went to Africa, but uh, where did we end up? We ended up in Egypt, spiritual Egypt, which is America. And what's going to happen? The Lord is going to get us out of here and take us where? Back to Israel. Okay, so, hey, it's all spiritual, but it's, it's a repeat. If you, if you look at it spiritually, the Lord is repeating everything he did back then, you know, but he's doing, he, there's slight differences this time, great differences and slight differences this time. Okay. So it's all spiritual, man, but that was pretty much it. You know, the, the thought that came to mind, you know, and as I was thinking about it, the more and more parallels were just linking up, you know, but we already know this, you know, when you, when you, when you read it, you already, you already know it, you know. If you're spiritual, you can see the parallels, you know, but hey, 
Lord willing, you know, we, we just, you know, we get out of here. Lord willing, we are part of those. All right. That nation, the house of David that, that, uh, gets delivered out of here. Cause that's definitely going to be, all right. A great deliverance, man. The greatest that, that has ever been. Okay. And you definitely are, are going to want to be a part of that. You do not want to miss that, you know, and come back as a baby and be told or be shown what happened. Okay. So with that, I hope you were edified. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.